Hello, Fight Insight fans, viewers, and listeners. Um, my name is Junior. I am the co-owner of MMA Social Squad, and you can find us on Instagram. And today, I get the honor of being Timmy B's co-host. Before we start, please make sure that wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it's on YouTube or Spotify, make sure you're smashing that like button. Make sure you're getting that subscribe button in, and make sure you're leaving us five-star reviews. If you'd like to support us, make sure you check out MiddaySquares.com and use the fight, uh, our code FIGHTINSIGHT15 for 15% off. Now, uh, our guest and our topics today, we talked to a really bad girl from Tough uh, 30. We discussed the true goats of MMA. We call out weird call outs and there's so much more. Tim, hit it. All right, our guest today truly embodies her nickname, Yansa, the goddess of wind, lightning, magic, and fire. She's powerful, violent, and has an unpredictable nature. Spending the majority of her professional career under the Invicta lights, this MMA fly flyweight holds a 5-2 and two professional record and a 2-0 and oh BKFC record, including a win, the only win, over now champion Christine Faria, most recently competing on Tough 30 as a part of Team Pena. People have been dying to see her back in the cage, and good news, you don't have to wait much longer. She returns to the cage on September 28th to face UFC veteran Pollyanna Botello at Invicta 49. It's a fight you don't want to miss. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podcast. Oh, I've always wanted to do this. Junior. Lynn. Iatsa Parata! Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Helen? Pretty How good. Are you, How Helen? are you guys? Good, good. good. Thank, you so, thank you so much for joining the podcast. We really appreciate you coming on. And uh, first thing I got to say, your nickname, very cool nickname. Where did you get the nickname from? Uh, that nickname was given to me by my capoeira master. Capoeira is like, yeah, so I started doing capoeira. I wasn't very good at it, but like I was trying to win. I didn't know we were, I didn't understand the respect. And then you're trying to own the space without, it's almost like an argument with your body where you don't have to be violent to win. It requires a lot of skills to be able to do that. Instead, I'm the one going in there shouting pretty much with my body. And it was just always, I would always try to beat up everybody. And then one day <laughs> the, our master, he stopped the ritual. He's like, you know what? I got a perfect name for you. And it did not feel like a compliment at the moment <laughs> because of all the chaos I was causing. But then when I started doing MMA and they yeah. asked me if I had a nickname, I figured you don't give yourself a nickname. You have to use one that's been given to you. So I decided to use my capoeira name. Nice. That's awesome, Helen. You know what? I have a funny story. I was doing uh, at my MMA gym, I was doing strength and conditioning classes with this guy, Jerem. He now runs a jujitsu school in Bahamas, this lucky bugger. And uh, he would always make us do these weird stretches at the end of class. And then as the weeks went on, suddenly, like, he would move one stretch into the next. And, like, we were flowing into these stretches. By the end of a couple months, we realized that he was teaching us capoeira. Good. And so we started to do all these capoeira movements without us even knowing. Like, we were rolling around the floor into stretches and stretches that we thought were, like, one-off. It was the coolest thing. So do you still do capoeira now? Uh, well, I do a lot of movement training because I don't lift weights. So the thing with capoeira and the movement that it uses requires you to be uh, strong, but not only on your bigger, bigger, like static looking muscles, but your stabilizing muscles where you get your balance from, you know, so I do a lot of that when I'm doing strength training. So it does look like capoeira. I do play capoeira music while I'm doing it, but I don't have any capoeira partners. So it's just me looking crazy at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. You're Helen Peralta, for goodness sakes. Uh, after you came off Tough, you know, people people are probably going to know you most from Tough, maybe. Um, a lot of the girls from that show, they seem to like buddy up and they became really good friends. Are you keeping in touch with anyone still from the show? Um, yeah, I do talk to some of the girls. Um, Juliana Miller 
was was the one that I got the closest the with. She was just as just as crazy as I am. So <laughs> our mental illnesses kind of match, and, and we got along really well. <laughs> uh, I also keep in touch uh, with our coach Juliana Pena. Uh, she's awesome. I, you know, I got a chance to go up to Chicago and train with her and her team. And also with Hannah. Hannah's actually fighting on the card. I am fighting in on September 28th. So we'll probably warm up together before we go out there. And Deep Pena is going to do it all over again. Nice. Now, it's crazy that you're on this card here in Invicta. Um, Hannah with you as well. And Caitlin Neal. We had Caitlin Neal on the podcast as well. Um it's crazy that Invicta was able to get all of you guys on the show. Are you, I was very mad that at the finale that you weren't fighting on the card in UFC. It's so weird. They had nobody from the show aside from the finale. Are you upset at that? Or did they explain to you why not? They didn't have to. Uh, after I saw the way they edited the, the event, the, the producers and the editors didn't create any interest for any other fights in the house. They left all the storyline out. I don't know if it's because uh, ESPN is, is uh, owned by Disney. I don't understand why, but this was the way they butchered that show. It made it really hard for me to even watch all of it. I had to skip some of it. <laughs> they made it so boring, but we were not boring. There was so much more going on in the house. There were so many other things that they could have used in that show. Shit, I even cut way for a fight I didn't even have just as a backup, just in case somebody missed way because I wanted to get back in there so badly. I, yeah. I taught so many free cooking classes to everybody in the house. I taught them how to pour <laughs> wine, you know, and there was like a lot of like fun TV worthy situations that were funny and annoying at the same time. They left it all out. My this, you know, my how much I hated uh, Brogan's laugh and how much it was starting me insane. It, it sounded like, no, seriously, it sounded like it's like a drowning pterodactyl. It, it's, it didn't sound like a real laugh. And I, you know, I, I, I remember telling the producers, make sure you give the public some context so they know how annoying this bitch is. But they left all of that out, so they didn't create any interest for any other fights in the house, to be honest. Uh, well, okay, and uh, <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate you saying all that stuff. I do. We we did we did have we did have Laura Gallardo on the show, and she taught you know we talked we talked about how you and her at least had some sort of spice on the show, right? There was a little bit there. Um, I also I know you're mentioning some funny things that happened. I also heard uh, an interesting story about how you weighed in uh, that got cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <we're, laughs> I feel the hesitation. For, do, you want, so like <laughs> do, you, do you want to say generally what happened? Well, what happened was that I am the smallest person on that car. It wasn't everybody. It wasn't just one fight a week. There was four fights in one week and, and there was two you know four women and i'm the only one who's not cutting weight well and laura didn't have to cut that much weight but then you have bro uh, i was um caitlin and somebody else the thing was that they used all the hot water there wasn't that much hot water in the house i don't have to cut weight because i had just fall i kept my weight down because i thought i was supposed to fight the week before it was a little bit of misunderstanding so all i had to do is i i had dinner the night before i woke up half a pound over I always weigh in with my fight short. I'm a fighter. I don't go out there in my lingerie like the chicks do. This is mm. not my style. But when mm -hmm. I put my bra on and my fight shorts on, I'm half a pound over. And n nothing in the house is hot. Everything is cold. The bathtub wasn't working. The sauna never worked the whole time we were there. It was a mess as far as like the house itself. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm not going to stress about it. And I know that these girls come out always with these tiny little thingies that are just covering their nipples. I'm like, oh, I just have to censor the nipple. And then I'll be good to go, <laughs> uh, you know, and I don't have to worry about this. So I put tape all over my nipples. I got on the scale and I came out and I told Kayla I was going to fuck her up. But apparently, like, you're not supposed to do that according to Disney. And then they had us redo the whole thing all over again. <laughs> they they killed oh, my yeah. vibe. They killed my vibe with that. Because then I came out with fully clothed. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll bake you a cake. And then she was like, I will eat it. I will eat that cake. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Of course you will. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Helen, Helen, it is really weird uh, the way that they, they, they do the show nowadays. It's not the same as when it first came out when there were villains and there were like, you know, like more storylines to it. And like you're saying, I guess because they didn't create any storylines, maybe the fans wouldn't have cared so much about the fights. But I still feel like it would have been cool to have like 
you fighting on the card or, you know, any of the other girls fighting on the card or the guys. Um, Invicta, though, shout out to Invicta, steps up. And so now, I mean, very smartly of them, they've got Caitlin fighting Hannah Guy, like you said, and you're on the card. But I feel you have the best matchup because you're fighting a UFC veteran that is very well known in Pollyanna Botello. Mm -hmm. So that's a good fight to you. When did when did you find out you were getting that? And then how excited were you for that? Well, I always tell uh, whenever I contact Shannon, and I tell her I'll fight anybody, but I would prefer if it's someone, you know, that's better than me because it makes it easier to train. You know, like if I fight someone and I don't feel like they're a threat, I get really nervous. It, it drives me insane. If I fight mm -hmm. someone that's really good, I'm just excited the whole time. I can go harder when I'm training. And she said she would do what she could, but I told her, this doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to turn anybody down. I would prefer if it is someone that's really, really good. You know, I like to put myself on matchups where you don't know who's going to win or you think I'm going to lose because I love proving people wrong. So, so I'm like, all right, that's what I want. And I think she, uh, what's her name? My opponent, Botello, she just got caught well, from the Botello, UFC. Botello, Poliana. Yeah, Poliana. Yeah. She just got caught from Poliana. the UFC, and I was like, this is perfect. The moment you mentioned the name, I'm like, I'm all in. I'm like, I'll fight anybody, but if you can get me this one, I'll be very happy. No, that's yeah, great. That's I mean, gonna... it's a good matchup. Now, Paul... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul. Pollyanna's going to be hungry because she's coming off, I think, three losses. I think she lost four I have some, lo five some knuckle UFC. sandwiches That's for her. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be hungry. To feed her. Sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so it's going to be a great fight. Now, Invicta, you've been with Invicta for most of your professional career, which is fantastic. We've always heard great things about Shannon uh, on, on this podcast. People always talk so highly of her that that she's very much for the fighters lets you go off and do your thing like if you need to go to another promotion and fight so um what is your future after you beat pollyanna to bits what's the what's what's next for you i don't i literally i don't have a plan i'm i'm gonna take this fight like if it's my last one so i'm hoping it goes at least two rounds because I, I, mm -hmm. I wanna I want some footage for my to promote myself. I don't I don't take my clothes off on social media. I need some other kind of content. So I wanna be there for at least 10 minutes and you know, producing some like cool stuff and you know, entertain the people. I'm, I believe I'm gonna win the fight because I mean when you work as hard, I'm not being cocky, you know, when you work as hard as I work, it's really hard not to be confident. And I know sometimes people think I'm just being cocky, but I, I man, I work my ass off. I sparred six rounds before I got here. I needed to lay on the ground and remember like how to be normal. And then in an hour, I have to go back to the gym, teach a class, and then I have to do more like uh, the sparring at night is more tailored towards like heavy grapplers. This, the, the sparring during the day is more like strikers with good grappling, but mostly like high level strikers. And, you know, you get beat up when you're striking. And then the grappling class is, you know, worst case scenario, somebody humps my legs for too long or whatever. But in the striking rounds, it's tough. So, <laughs> You know, after that, I'm here talking to you. So it's like, I can't think about Pollyanna and be worried because I just, I know what I just fucking did. And I'm about to go do it again in an hour and a half. So nice. Helen, I like, I don't see enough of you. Like, I'm so glad that we met this, this podcast. You know, I really appreciate you coming on because you kind of came on last minute when I was looking for someone and I appreciate it so much. You're such a personality. You're such a character. Even if stupid UFC didn't have enough of you on the tough show, they should have realized like what kind of person you are because like this kind of energy and personality would have shown like the minute they do interviews and things like that. Right. I believe like, so. I did mess. a lot of, I did a lot of interviews <laughs> and with a lot of cool topics, you know, and, and I can't believe they left all of that out. The whole point of me going into this in this charade was because I wanted people to know who I am as a person, like outside of the ring. I do think I want to live in a house with, with seven other chicks sharing a fridge i can I, I like things organized or women's are super fucking messy dude so it's like i didn't want to be there i did it just so that they can use the footage to promote me and instead they edited me out from the very beginning from <laughs> from the very from the way end all the way to the end of the show i'm, I'm yeah. surprised my name still shows up when you look up the season like what are you doing <laughs> no it <laughs> wow it it was weird um can i ask you've You've kind of mentioned it a few times, and we've talked about it on this podcast a lot. Actually, just a couple of weeks ago, I had Brian Bam Bam Barbarena, UFC welterweight, um, and we were talking about it. There is a lot of stuff going on in terms of like the nudity stuff and the sexual stuff, right? 
you seem very opposed to it. Like, you, you don't think that that's a good vibe for professional women? Can I, is that kind of where you're at on that? No, I don't think, I, I love to look at these chicks. I go out there and say my name with the guns. I just, I just don't think that as a fighter, you should be pushed back for not doing it. I enjoy, I'm part of the problem. I like all of their pictures. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. I just think, uh, <laughs> I just think that you shouldn't have to do that oh. to promote yourself. That shouldn't be the norm. Like, for example, fighters that keep their clothes on, I have like five followers on social media. You know, people don't see beyond, you know, and I get it. It's a culture that's being created that is like that. But if the promoters were to promote certain fighters, I don't show their ass on social media because I have all so many other things you can promote. I do cool shit all day long. Like my whole life is fun. But they decide they're going to promote just the ones that are naked already because sex sells. And, and I, I, I won't pay for it because I, I look like this. I never had to. But I understand what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, okay, but okay, but do you, okay, but so then that's interesting though. Are you saying that you feel that promotions are very much looking for those girls that will do that? Yes, yes. I think that's the problem. I don't have a problem with the girls. I, I love it. Yes. Please keep doing it. I just have a problem with the promoters when they like when you have fighters that they don't behave in that manner. That doesn't mean that they cannot be promoted. There's other aspects of, of femininity that you can promote. It's just not the tits and the ass. And most of the tits are, are fake, but you know, you pay for them, they're yours. Whatever, you know, it's your thing. <laughs> it looks good on pictures. It looks good on pictures, whatever, you know, but that shouldn't be the norm in order for you to promote certain fighters. Yeah. Can I say, Helen, I just, and I really appreciate it. Do you know Janae Harding fights for Bellator? She's like um, Australian, tall Not girl. Sure. Okay. Very, very pretty girl, great fighter. Um, but her Instagram, and when we had her on the podcast, we talked about it. Her Instagram is all very professional, no nudity, no none of that stuff. It's just like, you know, very uh, non risque photos, I'll say. And I, when we spoke to her about it on the podcast, I said, are you doing that on purpose? Like, is that your thing? Like, you want to be like that? She goes, yeah, she goes. And like you, she said, I don't mind that everyone does it. That's just not me. And I'm, and I'm being that way. And so I feel like I understand where you're coming from. Like in the sense that, yeah, there's people that, yeah, I don't have to do that, but don't discourage me or don't, don't not give me credit for who I am or the fighter that I am because I'm not putting that out there. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's great that women have that much power, you know, and I enjoy that we have that power, but it's just not my personality. Man, trust me, I know what I'm working with. I look great, but it's like it's not my personality. I, I don't I want little girls to know that you don't have to wave your ass around to get where you want to go. Yeah, yeah. That, that's always an option. That should be your backup plan. That should not be your go to. <laughs> yeah, it requires yeah. <laughs> yeah. it requires no skill. It should be a backup plan, not your go to. Yeah, I mean. It is hard to figure out how to pose, though, sometimes, Helen. So, I mean, there is some skill to it because, you know, they like. You got, the quote? You, got... <laughs> <laughs> you need to find a khaki fucking quote to go along with it, with a picture of your titties hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, I'm sure it takes a long time. No, I get it what you're saying, Helen. Um, I appreciate you talking about that, though, because I, I'm, man, I'm going to have you on the podcast again and talk about this longer because I, I do really like this topic. Um, I do want to ask you. Um, how has the fan, I mean, I guess then what you're saying, but how has the fan reaction been to you since being on the show? Did, did anything change for you? Not really. No, I mean, uh, not really. I didn't, I mean, I have had some people contact me and say like, Oh, I watched the show. You were the more interesting fighter there. I'm like, you're not wrong. Oh, I think you won your fight. I'm like, you're not wrong. But none of that counts. What matters <laughs> is the, the, the narrative that they want to put out there. So I don't argue with people. I don't I don't disagree with the decision either. You know, I, I had the skills to knock her out. I started to point fight. They gave it to her. I disagreed. But if she would have been unconscious, they could not have given it to her. So I'll take responsibility for that too. You know, yeah. it is what it is. All right. And um, when you, I guess, Junior, is there anything that you wanted to ask, Helen? specific no i think you i think you're hitting them i think you're i think you're doing such a great job i was super curious about your nickname and i'm so glad that that's what we started off with yeah yeah uh, no that was good um helen in terms of bkfc i said it in the intro you're the only person to have ever beaten christine faria who is now the dominant champion in bkfc uh what are your thoughts or plans on ever going back there and just taking that title, Helen? 
I did. I made it public that I wanted to do it. I just, I Christine has that face that I love to punch. It's just a we have like this interesting, you know. We're like, I don't know. We have this thing going on where I just love talking shit to her and I love fighting her. I, and it was such an amazing fight, you know. It was a great I fight. I yeah. want to do it again, you know. When I get old and I show this fight to other people, they're gonna be like, "So, did you guys do it again?" And I'm like, "No, we didn't," because the promoters wanted people that were flashing their tits at the end of their fights, and I didn't have tits, so. We didn't have a rematch. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if I mean, I, as we said, Shannon Knapp with Invicta, I've heard that she's very good with letting you guys go and pursue other things. So, I mean, if yeah. that came about that BKFC said, all right, crap, Christine is beating the crap out of everybody here. We need some fresh blood. You would be the one that they should reach out to because there's a story there to sell. Yeah, they don't like me very much because I have to call them out on some stuff. But here's the thing. If they send me that contract tonight, I'll sign it. Yeah, what, what, what I want to see that fight. If they send me that contract tonight, I will <laughs> sign it. I will fight Christine. If they don't want me to have the belt because they don't want me to do what I did before, get the belt and then leave. You know what? Let's do the fight at 127. That way there's no belt. You can keep your belt. I don't care. It means nothing when I beat her. It means a lot to mm -hmm. me, though. It means a lot to the fans. <laughs> I mean, we want because right now she's kind of like she's dominating, right? Um, yeah. Bef before I do let you go. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. What were you kind of hinting at with BKFC there? They just don't like. Well, well uh, you know, we when I left, they were pretty much told me like, oh, you have to fight this specific date. And I have to remi remind them that our contract had already expired because of all the postponement of this fight. And I never got a new contract, so I didn't have to do anything. I had an MMA fight that I had set up. And then after that fight, we can set up the Christine fight. And then I wanted more money. And they told me that they, oh, that's more than you got paid last time. I'm like, dude, you're about to drop a half a million dollars to pay some chick that doesn't even know how to fight based on social media followers. You can fucking pay me. <laughs> they didn't like any of that. <laughs> 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 so I have a big mouth and I'm I'm very smart. So I'm very good with contract. I'm, I, I'm very good at handling that kind of stuff. Promoters don't like that. They yeah, rather yeah. you work with one of the managers they're friends with so they can negotiate. No. Mm. <laughs> Helen, and then after that, the you know. I'm hearing that. No, wait. Hold on. We just talked about that on the podcast too, Helen, because yeah. Luke Luke Rockhold made comments about managers that work for the UFC. I'm using mm -hmm. air quotes for people that are um I'm using air quotes for people that are only listening on audio. Luke Rockhold said, "Don't get a manager that works for the UFC." And then, yeah. of course, you know, people are like, well, none of the managers work for the UFC, blah, blah, blah. And when I heard that, I'm like, well, I don't know, Luke, like, aren't all managers supposed to be working for you? You're saying that you think you agree to that, that there's managers that maybe are too cushy cushy? Not only that, there's uh, something about to come out in the discovery of the um, lawsuit against the UFC, where there's certain managers, they work for the UFC, they don't work for their clients. So they might have 20 people on their, their roster and then the UFC can contact them with some emails where the UFC will be, for example, hey, I got 20 and 20 for this guy, Timmy. And then uh, me as your manager go like, ah, Timmy will take 10 and 10 because he needs the money. I'm becoming easy to work with and cheaper so I can get favors for my other guys that I'm trying to push. The guys that I really want to represent, the guys that I really have think have a chance to go to the title and make me more money. So they're pretty much using people. And, but all promoters, they like to have these managers they have relationship with because they that makes the, the the contract signing and everything a lot easier for them because they the way they negotiate it, they're not looking out for you. These managers wanna they wanna look good. They wanna have a good relationship with the promoters because they wanna have that in. The fighters don't they can't advocate for themselves when everything is being done through emails behind your back. I wanna know when if I hire a manager, you fucking work for me. I wanna know what's happening. Yeah, you're I'm not, not doing anything that I do not understand. You have to explain to me everything and what is coming from. And if it's someone I trust, I'll let him run with it. But I haven't find that yet. So are you current? You currently just manage yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. So so Brian Bam Bam Barbarina, he manages himself and has for 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 most of his UFC career because he says, hey, I can just do this myself. But um, that's very interesting. Helen. I also don't like how you just negotiated me down from 20 and 20 to 10 to 10. What the hell? Are I you know, doing? right? But you Come didn't on. know that because I did that behind your back. You would have never known that. And that's yeah. how these guys like to negotiate. That's, you should never get a manager that works directly with a promotion you're trying to get into unless you have no skills and, you know, but because they're just going to try to use you for right, their right. for their benefit you know if and uh, you know what it's a win-win situation i'm a price fighter so i'm here to fight for money so yeah i'll let you use me as long as i understand the terms that's it you don't even have to trick me into it 
It's like with the Christine fight, if you don't feel like I should have the title, man, I don't even want the title. To me, I don't identify myself with things I acquired. People who do that are assholes. I just want to fight, you know? I'll fight at 127, 128. That way the title is not officially on the line. I can't win the title even if I win the fight. And then the fans get what they wanted, which is a real fight. And then you can keep promoting your only fine chicks all over. And I will watch because I love looking at them half naked. So it will be great. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Uh, Helen, I wasn't going to ask this question, but I feel I should. And I don't even know that there's an answer. If you were not a fighter, Helen, what would you be doing in life? I feel like you're a born fighter. I don't know. Is there anything you would have done in life but fight? Huh? I think I'm probably like a hitman, but I will only target people. I will only target people who don't use their fucking blinkers. It drives me insane. Or people who throw garbage on the ground. Like that, that's what I would be doing. I'll be a vigilante. <laughs> Is there I was any... going to say that too. A revolutionary vigilante. Yeah. Like one yeah. of those ones that stands up on the top of the hood of the party that starts giving off speeches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Helen, man, this is such a pleasure. Helen, you are you are by far one of the most interesting interviews I've ever done. I never I I mean, I would have had no clue that you had this kind of personality. And I really hope oh, that. Wow. I mean, I, I to be fair, I wouldn't have known, and I and I yeah, really no, but I I, mean, I I find that as a compliment. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, Junior, it, it is crazy, and and this is the utter shame of what happened with Tough this season because we didn't get to see enough of people, and so that's why I'm so grateful to have people like yourself and Laura and Caitlin on the show because at least we kind of got to meet them and understand who they were a little bit more. Um, you're fighting on, again on September 28th in Victa 49. It's going to be a fantastic card. Uh, are they having you wear your tough jersey out? No, no, no not right? Gonna, I'm not promoting them for free. They didn't promote me, so fuck them. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, uh, Junior. Before we let Helen go, is there anything that you wanted to ask or say to her before we let her go? you are so raw like you are so raw and i absolutely love it like i feel like you should walk around with a t-shirt that just says cut the bs like 24 <laughs> like 7 it. like that's that's the vibe i get off of you so it's it's really refreshing to see people like you in mma we do get to see the really stereotypical stuff so people like you that come through and just have this kind of intensity i appreciate you and it was really great talking to you Thank yeah, you. you're amazing, yeah. Helen. Um, <laughs> where where can people find you um, if if they do want to follow you and find you? Where should people be reaching out to you most? Um, this Instagram and Facebook, I check those often. I, like I check that every like two hours when I'm I'm free during the day, and uh, that's um, Helen Peralta on both. And I have a Twitter account. I started using it more, but I'm still a little confused with how it works. But uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> Yeah, Somebody's you, helping me post stuff on there and, and then like people reach share it or something. So I'm, I retweet it. So I'm getting more familiar with that. So on Twitter, I'm Helen Peralta123 because I was lazy. <laughs> so that's my name now. <laughs> nice, nice. And I, yeah, I've got it on the ticker below. I think on Instagram, you're actually Helen underscore Eonsa underscore yes. Peralta. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's you there. So go find Helen there. Follow her. Support her in her journey and her um career and in all your fights helen you are amazing congratulations on everything uh who is someone that you know that you think would be good for us to have on our podcast someone, someone interesting and I, exciting someone interesting and exciting you already got all the guys from the from the uh, tough season none no well no guys i only had caitlin and laura you haven't had miller juliana you miller you must have juliana on there she is she's really funny yeah okay can you put in a good word for me yeah i will all right <laughs> helen kick ass you are the absolute greatest before we let you go is there anything that you'd like to say to fans followers friends and new fans of yours as a result of this i just want to thank everybody that supports my career and follows along to my journey uh, it is a journey for me i do not care about any title of any way shape or form i will just fight anybody and of course that includes the champions so titles will be involved but it's not my goal <laughs> what i really want to be is a motivational speaker i want to uh, you know show people and teach them how to find the badass within themselves and right now i'm just using myself as a guinea pig i'm just collecting cool stories to go with it and i, I appreciate everybody that follows me career and 
you know, those things that you do on social media, like and share, do those for me because I'm trying to be popular so that they will give me the bigger fights. <laughs> and apparently, <laughs> it, 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 skills don't matter. It's about followers and likes. So please go to my page and do all of that stuff that you're supposed to be doing. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Helen, you're the absolute greatest. All the best to you. Good luck on your fight. We will definitely be following you all the time. You're a friend of the podcast and uh, we'll always be a fan of yours. So thank you so much, Helen. And we'll talk to you again for sure. Thank you for having me. It thank was you, a pleasure. Helen. All the best to you. Bye. Bye-bye. What? Junior, the greatest. Cool. Very cool. The greatest, <laughs> like, unknown interview that we could have ever had, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I hope we did something for her social because she's Dude. most deserving. She is great. Uh, I love her. I love her. Her energy. <laughs> her Crazy. Yeah. Dude, the things she touched on, too. I love it. Like. I, if you follow and watch this podcast, and if you're here because of Helen Peralta, thank you so much. Please follow and subscribe. Do all that. Um, we talk about it a lot. I, you know, Bam Bam and I were a couple of old old souls talking the other day and saying like, I don't really like the girl flashing her boobs, and I'm not too sure about the girl like twerking on stage. Like that's seemingly how it's going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it, and mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. so for and so for Helen to just come right out and say it. And saying, yeah. no, man. and to tell us that, hey, look, I'm not being promoted because I don't do that. That's harsh, man. Shit. I mean, it's reality. It's harsh reality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's reality, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Not going to lie. One of the podcasts I did when I put out that cover art that was just the girl twerking on it, that one got a lot of views, my friend. Because hey, that was. That was the ultimate science project too. We wanted to see if that would work. <laughs> yeah, because people see because people see that kind of thing, and that's what they're going to click yeah. on. Um, Junior, thank you so much for co-hosting with me. For people that don't hey. realize, I mean, you should know if you're a regular on the show. But MMA Social Squad, that's this guy. So this that's is me. the guy that this is the guy that does the art, right? Like, uh, so tell us quickly, um, how did you get started with MMA Social Squad? Oh. <sighs> Uh, me and a co-host, Rich, um, uh, we, we just loved MMA. We, so uh, we watch it all the time. And, um, I think during COVID, the idea of just having something to, you know, occupy our time, or, but also show our passion for the sport, um, was truly needed. And then we came up with the Instagram idea. And nice. so we were doing that for like quite a bit, just doing like the content stuff. but. Um, as some of you might know, uh, there's a lot of MMM pages out there in the world. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of them are just about reporting news or reposting news. Um, and so because of that, uh, we were venturing to see how do we keep every post unique, like completely unique, completely something you haven't seen on, on somebody else's page before. And that's what MMA Social Squad is right now. Yeah, man, because you guys are doing like unique and creative art for the most part right doing yeah. post posters for fighters doing very unique like stats or breakdowns of fighters and i love it and you know you and i have been friends for what i guess a couple years now right like it's been a while now yeah i would say you're definitely my one of my day ones like yeah. when i started this <laughs> venture i probably met you like a month after yeah yeah and uh <laughs> yeah. i'll i'll say man um kudos to you because you're sticking to your guns and doing like unique stuff i like to think that that's the same as me like i do unique things there's mma ga underscore gains which is one of the pages that we both follow that i love because they just do the data right yeah um you know they do unique stuff we don't get the most followers we don't get the most thing but at least we're putting out quality stuff that well in our opinion, it's quality stuff, but that it's unique. You're not going to find it anywhere else, right? It's your right. unique art. It's your unique take on things. Uh, MMA Gains does their unique thing. And I like that, man. So congratulations to you. Keep keep kicking ass with that, man. And right. I appreciate Thanks all the so help much. you do. I appreciate all the help you do for me, man. Uh, it is very beneficial for me, too. Um, let's see. If sponsors are your thing and you want healthy chocolate bars if you're trying to get into shape mm -hmm. and healthy i see them at walmart all the time and people are buying them by the boatload because i continually yeah. see midday squares you'll see it like where they've got the kombucha and like the healthy smoothies it's like these little chocolate bars you'll see that's what i'm selling well not selling but that's what you can buy through us go to middaysquares.com and use code fight insight 15 to save 15 percent. you will not regret it 
like they are so good man and they keep mm. you satiated throughout the day you don't snack on junk all that um friends of the podcast update so there's a couple things i guess that we should talk about one is that for the same card that helen is going to be on our friend of the podcast caitlin neal who fought helen on tough 30 she's mm. fighting and she's fighting Hannah Guy, who was one of the um, teammates of Helen. And uh, here is the fight poster for that fight card. I'll stick that up on the screen as well. So there is Caitlin Neal versus Hannah Guy. And then, of course, like our friend of the podcast that was on this podcast today, there is the Helen Peralta versus uh, Botello. So that is Wednesday, September 28th. That's going to be a week from the day that this podcast is released. Be sure to watch this card. Invicta, do you watch Invicta, Junior? Not as much as I should. And I was about to say, it's it's so smart of Invicta to have so many of the tough fighters on one card. Like It's genius. Yeah, it's really smart. I I feel like the UFC dropped the ball on that one. Because you're absolutely right. I remember when we used to have tough finales. You probably see half of the house still on that card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. like on on this season of Tough 30, there were some good fighters, man. There were some people that were were interesting, like maybe not personality interesting, although I think they were. But they were good looking people, good fighters from the skills that they showed on the show. Not one of them got a fight, which is insane. Because here's the kicker. You can go on goddamn Dana White Contender Series, win one fight in good yeah. fashion and get on these girls and guys are on the show for six weeks living in a house with no internet no family some of them as we know they they miss the passing of a relative while they're in the house you know what i mean like crazy mm-hmm. stuff they mm-hmm. win one fight maybe two fights and they still don't get you know even one fight on a card in ufc that's that's a shame man it's it's that's uh yeah. it's a it's a real shame like when Helen was saying, like, kind of like, I'm not going to promote you, me. You didn't promote you. Fuck you, UFC. Kind of thing. I'm like, <laughs> I can see it, dude. I can see it because it's tough, man. Like the, these girls were yeah. busting their ass. And remember, you know, like Caitlin Neal, if you don't follow Caitlin Neal, I would follow her. She's She's got a very good Instagram. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not it's not overly sexual or anything like she's she's a influencer pre pre the tough show. Like she does a lot of stuff like selling gym clothes and uh, supplements. Mm-hmm. She has her her companies and things like that that we talked about on the show. But, um, you know, she was because prom- remember, the show ended, and then it started to air. So she's got to sit there and pretend like she doesn't know whether she won or lost. Yeah. And right. so and so they're busting their ass promoting the show every week and doing viewing parties and all that crap leading up to the finale. And then to know that they don't even get a fight. Like, that's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the odd word. Yeah, you've got um, you've got twelve fighters essentially sitting there promoting the shit out of your show, yeah, being stars of your show, and then getting essentially nothing in return. I mean, kind of. When Helen was saying that, uh, you know, she was hoping to get all this footage, like you would think, like as a, you know, as a going away gift bag, they maybe give you all of the footage of you so that you could use it at your disposal. Like here are all of your candid clips and whatnot. Like at least, like I was, I'd assume Helen was hoping for some form of promotional material, something that mm-hmm, was like, "Hey, mm-hmm. look at me! Like this is what I do, and this is what I got to do in a professional setting." You know, um, she didn't even get that. Like, no, wow, give give the video editor scraps away. Like you don't, you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think probably one of the things too is that, and then because she came on as a last minute guest for me, I didn't do my normal thing where I like find a bunch of video clips and make a cool reel for her. But I'm gonna mm-hmm. do, but I'm gonna do that by the time this podcast come out. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go watch Tough again, watch her fights, maybe get some clips and maybe try to put something together for her because um, I just used one of her own videos for for when I was promoting her for this podcast before we filmed. So I'm going to try and do one for her as well. Maybe you can do one too, man. You've got the skills. Oh, yeah. No, she's definitely yeah. getting uh, the neon throne treatment. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, because it, like, yeah, really it's crazy. Yeah, because it's yeah. crazy, man. Like, she deserves it. What a... God damn. I'm on such a high, Junior, because she, she's so <laughs> freaking cool. Yeah. 
<laughs> She's so cool. That's I fun. love it. Uh, guys, the, the podcast is now on the RageWorks Podcast Network. So you can go to RageWorksNetwork.com. It's a network in the U.S. where it's a bunch of podcasts come together. So uh, we're happy to be a, as part of that network. I know that we're getting lots of views and followers from them as well. So welcome to anybody that's finding us through there. And uh, if you want other cool podcasts like this one, uh, go to RageWorksNetwork.com and you'll find a bunch of podcasts there. Uh, Junior, let's get to a couple of topics. Yeah. This one here, let's go to this one with Mighty Mouse. What do you got on this? This is uh, Mighty... Joe Rogan was saying they don't talk about him in reference to Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson. They said they don't talk about him. They don't bring him up. It's just really weird when they play the Who inside arenas. They have that music and they have the compilation. How the fuck do you not have Mighty Mouse in that? And so what he's talking about is when they show, I guess, like a, a montage of all the greats, they yeah. don't they don't put Mighty Mouse on it. Thoughts and comments, Junior. Yeah, I uh, I know Joe Rogan is a huge Mighty Mouse fan, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be surprised if he was number one on Joe Rogan's goat list. Yeah, um, and I completely understand that. I know during uh, Mighty Mouse's career, the concern was that you know he was a he was a little bit boring get into the decision but then when you really look at his record he's knocking people out he's yep. submitting people he came out with the mighty whiz bar like i don't know how that doesn't make it into the montage so um a hundred percent agree a hundred percent agree i don't know how he's not on anyone's top five goat list that's that's kind of nuts to me and um Maybe UFC is just downplaying the regret of trading Mighty Mouse for Ben Askren. <clears throat> okay. Uh, counter argument. Mm. I agree. Mighty Mouse is on my Mount Rushmore of, of MMA greats for sure. Um, I think the reason why he's not on the montage, and I, and I am okay with this, is because he is an active competitor in another organization being one FC. And I think because he's their grand prix winner, because he's their champion, I think I am okay with you leaving him out of it for now. And when he retires or when he, you know, stops, well, I guess, yeah, when he retires or, or if he were to ever come back to UFC, then you put him in. Mm -hmm. But I feel mm -hmm. like it's kind of okay for you to not put him on your videos in an arena where everybody's watching because then you're just kind of promoting one FC. What do you think about that angle? When you take it from that angle, then yeah, that would that would make sense. I I always thought the sentiment of that video, and maybe that's why Joe was a little uh, let's call it salty about it, is because that video is supposed to show like the like the amazing essence of the UFC, like all of the people who have touched the sport and have made it fantastic. So yeah. I get it. If Dana's seen this as a, I don't want to promote another league, then sure, that makes sense. But if the video is really meant to be a montage about all the people who really made the UFC great, I don't know how you're how Mighty Mouse isn't on that. Yeah, but like I'm saying, though, I think they do put him in. I just think they put him in after he's done his 1FC career. For sure, for sure. If there, And it could be a legal issue uh, usage of image or, or of a person's image and yeah. maybe that's uh being governed by one fc so ufc doesn't want to you know step over uh, any toes but okay. it's all about what it was meant to be <laughs> and uh just so you know you made mention about him being kind of a boring fight i did run the stats before um, it seems like i knew you were gonna say this or that you set me up but <laughs> mighty mouse had zero finishes in his four fights where he was not champion with the UFC. Once he held the title, he had 11 defenses of all his wins. He finished eight of them for a 73% finishing rate. So he was finishing, man. I, I think a lot of people think he wasn't finishing fights or that he was born. No, he was finishing dudes. Uh, at a high yeah. rate, though, I believe the only champion to have a better finishing rate than him was Anderson Silva at 80%. But, and I mean, and Anderson is like, by far, we feel like a goat, right? Like not even, For no sure. question. So interesting. 
Uh, one last thing I'll say about Mighty Mouse and the trade. Do you mm-hmm. think? Do you think that trading Mighty Mouse made the flyweight division what it is now? Get rid of this guy who's the goddamn greatest, and now let people like Moreno, Figgy, Kaikara, France make the division look more competitive because I posted a, a, a post saying, could Dimitri, how, how would DJ do against the current UFC flyweights? And it is unanimous. He will murder all of them in one night. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody gives the top 10 a chance. You know, they're like, yeah. well, maybe Moreno could make it three rounds. You know, like that's, that's what people feel. So, I mean, Maybe by trading him, they did a good thing because when did we ever really care about the flyweight division before Mighty Mouse was gone? And it's like a chicken and the egg thing. Like, I don't know if it's because these guys are amazing or it's because now that DJ's gone in comparison, the the division looks interesting. That's an interesting take. Um, But then I guess the next question on top of that is like, so uh, it was Cejudo who took the belt from uh, from DJ. Yeah. And Cejudo... Yeah, and then he became double champ. So I think the the hype around him and the mere fact that he was a flyweight is what um, rejuvenated that division. Because I think you know, you know what? I think he might be on to something. If DJ was still here, it probably would have been like they would have probably would have fought each other like six or seven times. They probably would have held the top of that division until Figgy and Moreno showed in, but then you kind of seen it in the kind of divisions right now where the top fives are just fighting each other over and over and over again. Right. Everyone seems to have a trilogy. So, um, yeah, I feel like DJ's fight IQ would have kept them in that spot like yeah. forever. And then, we'd yeah. be comp- and then we'd be complaining that the flyweights are boring. boring. Uh, similar, and again, this relates to our guest, Helen, but here's something i haven't posted this yet on my instagram because i don't know that i want to get blocked by everybody (laughs) oops there's a banner here do we just trade away valentina if i trade away valentina does the flyweight division get a lot better do we suddenly then have a lot more interesting fights where we don't have a champion just murdering everybody at will (laughs) um thoughts comments see okay so that's a really interesting question and i guess it comes down to your preference do you like it when the belt keeps changing from person to person to person or do you like it when somebody comes in and kind of owns the game for a while for me i kind of like the latter i like seeing why you are truly going to be one of the best of all time um and for that sake i don't trade valentina i just wait for someone to kick her ass or she retires um but if you're someone who likes if you like the chaos and you like the belts being switched over and over again then absolutely you you let her go you free her up and you let because honest uh in the division right now i don't think anyone's can keep that belt for too long if you see the yeah, current I, uh top 10 that's i feel like it's gonna get tossed around quite a bit yeah i mean it's tough right because I don't know. I guess my thing is the reason why I don't like when someone holds it for so long. All right. Let me put it this way. I don't like when it's Valentina because she's unbeatable. And okay. like, and I guess like I never would buy a pay-per-view with Valentina as the main event because I'm like, well, I know she's going to win. Like it is a foregone conclusion. If you were holding mm-hmm. the, if you were holding the belt in close fights, and it was like, holy shit, this contender, like this person's going to t- do it. Like, and if, and if the odds were always like, you know, one to one or one and a half, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like if it, mm-hmm. if it was like plus 130 or something, okay, fine. But like when it's like, what is a Valentina odds? Like plus a million? Like it's like. Nowadays, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like, it's too much. So right. I don't know. That That's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens with that. I mean, it's not like they're going to trade Valentina. But yeah, and I plus think... my answer is probably very biased because I love Valentina. <laughs> I'd be so sad if she left. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, who who doesn't love Valentina? I mean, she's amazing. Uh, <laughs> all right, next topic. This is something that you wanted to talk about. You wanted to talk about making the right call, and by call yeah. we mean call out. 
So here's something that you had, and this was from at AJ MMA, or this, this is who we got this post from. Armin Secure... Sarukian says, I want to fight Patty Pimblet. I think you had a great start, but now it's time to move up a level. And so your problem with this was what? Not necessarily a problem, but more of a curiosity if it ever makes sense to call out someone who's uh, below you on the ranking uh, for your career or for uh, whatever it needs to get you to the next step, like does it make sense to fight someone who's below your rankings? So I was really curious to see what you thought about that one. I know I have my opinions on it for sure. Wait, what, uh, what division are we talking about here? He's in what? I believe I mean, he's both heavy, in li lightweight. He, he's heavyweight now, technically. <laughs> <laughs> technically. <laughs> so clever. Patty so the fatty. fatty. Uh, Armin Sarukian is ranked number 10 and on the current UFC rankings, I don't think Patty's even ranked. So Patty's still not ranked. Okay. Yeah. He's not top 15. That's for sure. As per now, now, mind you, there's no, there's no champion. So Charles kind of bumps everyone down a spot, mm -hmm. but so there's Sarukian is number 10. Uh, he's followed by Conor McGregor, which is so stupid. Get him out of there. Demir is I could have bumped into him at the mall. I wouldn't know who that is. <laughs> Jalen Turner, the tarantula. I love that dude. Dan Hooker, get him yeah. off of these rankings. Tony Ferguson, get him off of these rankings. So, okay, maybe Patty should be 15, 14, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, but so you're saying number 10, why the hell are you calling out a unranked Patty Pimblet? I could see the reasons for it, but I'd love to get the Tim Tim opinion on this one. Yeah, I say do it. I think yeah. I think I think you I think you call him out because first of all, rankings mean nothing. Right? Like who gives a crap up of the rank? The rankings don't mean anything when it comes to title shots, when it comes to anything. Like rankings don't mean Fair. anything. The Fair. fact that Conor McGregor is ranked number eleven is insanity. Like he shouldn't like the rankings are so stupid. Then you see what happened with Patty in England when he fought and like they turned the lights out for him. The mm -hmm. crowd, the crowd is insanity. I don't think that's because they were in England either. I think you put Patty anywhere around the world now and you black out the lights for him. He was third on the main card and they blacked out the lights for him. I don't even think they did it for the main event fighters. You know what no. I mean? Like they, <laughs> yeah. they, 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 they treat him like a friggin' superstar champion. So if you're Sarukian, and again, I could have bumped into Sarukian at the mall and I don't know that I would recognize him. I think he's got to make a name for himself. And so, yeah, I think you call out Patty, especially if you can, if you think you can beat Patty now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you mm -hmm. think you can beat Patty before he starts, well, he's, he's so hyped on himself, God, but before he even gets better and better, like the kid's going to grow and grow and grow and get better and better. So you call him out, you take him out and you make a name for yourself. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm not against it. And look, kill or be killed. Because if he ends up calling you out, you're going to fight him anyways. And then if you lose to him now or then, you're going to lose your spot. You're going to lose your ranking. So, mm -hmm. you know, Sarukian gets a nice main event status maybe on a fight night against the Patty Pimblet. Yeah. Right? Uh, that would be good. I also think, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Like, I, I just think about that's how I met. That's how I met Bam Bam Barbarina. Mm -hmm. God, like eight years ago is when he beat Sage Northcut. You know, okay, it was, yeah, it, it was, it was an unknown dad bod, Bam Bam Barbarena <laughs> got, got put up against the friggin' hot shit Sage Northcut, you know? And uh, I didn't know who Bam Bam was and Bam Bam goes out, beats the crap out of him, does his funny role at the end. If you have fight pass and you have not watched that fight, go watch Bam Bam Barbarena versus Sage Northcut and make sure you watch the whole thing um crazy fight and it was the next morning i was training like i was sparring and i started doing the role like bam bam and i sent it to him <laughs> and i and i sent it to him on instagram and he replied and he was like hey thanks man blah blah and then ever since then we've been friends and now he's like a great fan of the podcast cool. but um cool. yeah i don't know i'm okay with it so you're and, and you think what you think do it call him out you know what now that we've discussed the uh, part of the rankings i think 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. The rankings don't the rankings don't mean anything in regards to who you call out. It sucks that if you're if you lose to this guy, your rankings going to drop. But at the same time, you call out another big name, and it might just jump up all the same because who knows the rhythm and rhyme to how the rankings work. But um, absolutely, at this stage of the game, you go for you go for stardom. You go for the big fights. Uh, you know the turn the light out moments and. Um, although I don't want to discredit Armin in this call out, but obviously like, it was like, who wouldn't want to fight Connor? You know, like, yeah. you know, with, with the Connor name comes like the red panty night and everything associated to it. And now Patty's one of those names. So yeah. I think it actually makes sense to call him out. Um, um, yeah. It, you know what? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, we are running, we are running out of time for the show i had some other topics that i was thinking but we've had some great conversation on some stuff i'll just put up this which i've had on my uh computer for forever that i was going to talk about this but and i said patty the fatty but uh here's tj dillashaw who's fighting soon but when he was talking about patty he said he's just loving diabetes that's like a recipe for destroying your body i guess there's one thing when i look at it they can promote him the right way and do all this good stuff and he's got some stuff to grow and get into the higher echelons of the UFC. But if you keep that same work ethic that he has now, he'll never be a champion. This is coming from the guy that took drugs his whole life. So good yeah. on you, TJ. Um, <laughs> but, I, but, but I will say, what do you think about his weight fluctuations? Patty. Um, so... As uh, you know, as we come to uh, want to be fit people and our knowledge about fitness expands, one of the things that I'm really starting to realize is that there are some outlier people out there who just have freak bodies, you know, like just do things that like you don't understand. Like I've had, I have skinny friends who would eat six combos at McDonald's, you know, like, and it's just like no issue. They don't gain it. They don't know why it's, why it's happening and not happening for them. I like until a doctor says, Patty, what you're doing is dangerous. I really do put them in that freak body. I like, I give them that status. I give them a freak body status. Uh, Cause yeah, to a normal person, this isn't healthy. And I can't imagine being in the UFC doing unhealthy stuff. You know, I feel like there's just too much people around you to not let that happen. So I, I put them in a freak body uh, status. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, the problem is when he's doing that, this dude is never available for a short notice fight. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. never available for that. I feel like it's bad for people that look up to him. Because what he's doing, aside from the fact that he's a fighter, um, is essentially what you would call yo-yo dieting. Right? Right. And yo-yo dieting um, is known as weight cycling. It's the pattern of losing weight and gaining weight and then dieting again and again. And, and it's going up and down, right? I believe, mm -hmm. I believe there are a ton of bad things to this. And so I just looked it up. There's uh, 10, you know, bad things about yo-yo dieting. Uh, it does lead to more weight gain over time, which will be a problem for him because he's got a long career ahead of him. And if he keeps doing this and if the science is right, you know, he may mm -hmm. not be able to lose it and he's going to have to go up higher body fat percentage. Um, it can lead to muscle loss, fatty liver. That's one for sure. Risk, increased risk of diabetes, which Pillashaw just talked about, uh, increased risk of heart disease, increased blood pressure. Uh, it can cause frustration. Okay. Well, that's a mental thing. Don't worry about that. Uh, yeah. Anyways and prevents long-term lifestyle changes, blah, blah. Okay, so there are health concerns, fatty liver, health, di uh, heart disease, blah, blah, blah. Over time, gaining weight. Over time, bigger fat body percentage. I don't know, dude. He's got to stop that unless he wants to go up a weight class. See, that's the thing. Like, it, you're absolutely right. But the level that Patty's on, I mean, like, let's just call it stardom. Stardom that he's on... I just have a really hard time believing that his trainers, like his physicians, his his friends, like all of these people 
uh, who are who have a responsibility to keep him healthy are saying this is horrible for you and he's saying yeah but i'm gonna do it anyways because then there's something there's an issue going on with patty um the reason why i hinted at hey maybe it was a freak situation is because i i feel like he's too much of a star too much of an asset for the usc for people to let him kill himself you know uh and that there must be some exception like there has to be because then that's just really irresponsible not only for him but just everyone who's watching him do it yeah 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 wait are you saying you're saying not just the ufc's responsibility to take care of him but like the people around you right a hundred percent like um it's not an individual sport you might see just one person in the ring at the end of the day but there's just so many people attached to it and right. so many people whose hype and excitement comes from your success I can't imagine they're just saying, yeah, go on, <laughs> enjoy diabetes, enjoy life. Like, Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is you're going to have people that are just yes men around you at some point as well, right? We've seen that with, with fighters, like with Mike Tyson, he was a big one yeah. that had that problem, right? When you get so large that you just have yes men around you, um, that can be the problem, right? Uh, and then, mm -hmm. so unless you have real people around you that are helping you, you know, um, but that's it. I mean, hey, look, Patty, myself, MMA Social Squad, we're available for hire. We will be <laughs> your true friends. We will walk around with you. We'll travel the world with you and we'll, you know, we'll tell you what's good and bad. But I think you got to have those people around you, man. That That's a good call out, actually, is that it's the people yeah. around you that if you're not looking out, similar to how Helen was saying, hey, look, if you're going to get a manager, it better be someone that friggin looks out for your best interest. And again, 100%. My buddy, Bam Bam Barbarina, he's the same way. He goes, yeah, I don't have a manager. I don't need it, right? Like, and we talked about that before. And then Luke Rockhold in his CTE-induced ravages, rages, right? He was saying, like, <laughs> don't, these managers, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, when I read it, I thought he was crazy. When I read it, I thought he's crazy. But then now when I think about it more and I digest it, I'm like, ah, shit, this guy's onto something, man. And Helen was gang, like, all over that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Those corporate conspiracies, man. It, it, hey, if anyone <laughs> loves a conspiracy, it's me, my friend. Uh, all right. So we didn't talk about any fights because I'm actually releasing this in a couple of weeks. So we're not really too sure how the fight cards are going to be. But we pray that Invicta 49 goes down as it is. And at least we get the Caitlin Neal versus Hannah Guy, uh, where um, that's a good fight. I am supporting my my friend Caitlin Neal on that one because she was a friend of the podcast. She came on the podcast. She's a great person um, that, that we got to know. And then you've got the Helen Peralta versus Pollyanna Botello. And that is going to be a barn burner. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I like I said, Botello's coming off quite a few losses going back down to Invicta. No offense, but, you know, going to Invicta, she's going to be hungry. And as Helen says, she's got a couple of knuckle sandwiches waiting for her. So Helen, yeah, kick yeah. ass, Helen. Fuck. Yeah, I'm so excited do it her. up. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm the, I'm the biggest goddamn Helen Peralta fan now. I, I I'm, I'm really hyped for her. like really 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 hyped for her. yeah I hope I uh, I hope nothing but good stuff comes her way yeah man <laughs> buddy uh before we end the podcast is there anything that you want to say to people that maybe didn't know who the hell was the face behind MMA Social Squad oh uh first of all thank you followers I know the algo has been pretty hard to battle with but uh Thank you guys. Thanks to anyone who's uh, uh, following me. Thanks to anyone who's following Fighting Sight in, uh, podcast. To be honest, the things that you guys are doing, like I brag to you guys a lot. I brag to my friends about you guys a lot. Um, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, we're coming from, you know, the true north and strong, you know, <laughs> and um, it's really great to, uh, to have that community. But other than that, man, um, Actually, you know what? There is something. Uh, content creators, especially the really original ones, the ones that, uh, you know, put their heart and uh, tears and their sweat into their work and are getting uh, defeated right now, like, keep on it. Keep on it. Keep shining. Keep trying to be unique. I love it. And we all love it. And just because the tools are saying that it's not going your way, it's, it's, it's BS, man. Keep it up. Keep, keep it up. And that's about it, Tim.
<laughs> wise, wise words, my friend. You should you should video record that part that you just said and release that on your Instagram because that is wise, wise words, man. And here's the thing, dude. I have seen pages with double, triple the number of followers that that I may have or that other people may have, but their engagement is less than mine or less than other people. Sometimes it's not the numbers of the followers. It's the quality, right? right? It's not the size mm -hmm. that counts. That's what I've been told, Junior. Never, never have I been told. <laughs> it's not the size that counts. It's 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 not it's not the quantity, it's the quality. So yeah, man, for the followers, and same as for this podcast, man. I love you guys. If you guys are following and watching these podcasts and stuff like that, I really greatly appreciate it. We're trying to do our best all the time. We're trying to create new stuff, good stuff. Next week on the podcast, shit, I forgot to say, next week on the podcast, I've got two people from celebrity boxing. I talked about it Ooh. last week's podcast. One, yes. one is the guy that Kaylee Jenner took to the prom. He's a boxer. He's fighting, I think it's his second fight. And then the other guest, I've got two of them. One's going to be my co-host. One's going to be the guest, but we're all like, they're both from Celebrity Boxing. The other one is called, um, their name is Brady Bunch, fighting for the non-binary championship. Uh, Brady Bunch is a recording artist, like really popular, opened for 6 mm -hmm. 9 a whole bunch of stuff uh, also was just featured on TMZ for uh, calling out Caitlyn Jenner and wants to fight Caitlyn Jenner in the boxing ring. And wow. uh, so made, made headlines on TMZ dude and uh, Brady bunch will be on the podcast. So that's going to be pretty cool. So it's a, it's a couple of celebrity boxing people we're going to have on next week. So yeah, man, we're going all over the place with this thing and uh, we'll see what happens, man. So, so cool, man yeah junior thank <laughs> yeah. you so much man it's been a long time coming for you to be on the podcast i really appreciate it buddy and i think we had some good topics we had one of the yeah. best goddamn guests i've ever had and oh, uh, thanks <laughs> have a good one man right around now you're gonna see some other things go check out our stuff oh it's over it's gonna be over here so all right man have a good one thank you so much for coming take care guys. don't don't turn off your computer i'm gonna 